I use travel time all of the time with my events, and there's really no good treatment of it with the calendar applications, so I've rolled my own using Workflow. I'm not going to create this one from scratch. I've already done a screencast for this episode showing you how to make a workflow. I've also got an extensive video course on workflow, but the uh, what I wanted to show you is the steps in this one since it's kind of complicated. The first step is to find a calendar event under certain circumstances, and you can see that here if it's in the next eight days, um, if it's not all day, and if there is a location, if the location is anything is an important step because then it's only going to offer me to create uh, travel time on events where I've got a actual uh, location to go to. Then it's going to give me that list and allow me to choose it. That's what I get with these next two steps. And then it's also going to uh, drag out of the event that I've chosen um, the name of the city and, and query me how long does it take to get there. Now, I could write this workflow so it automatically calculates, but I live in California where uh, travel times are kind of hard to predict and they always take longer than you think. So I actually think I have a better idea in my head how long it'll take to get to a location than letting the computer figure it out for me. And then it asks the question, are you going to travel there and are you going to travel back? Sometimes I just want travel time for the return trip. Like if it's a second event at a location, sometimes I want it for both directions. It just depends. So we're going to query to get that information and then we can use it later. Then there's a couple if statements. The first if statement is if you check the box to say you're going to travel there. When you do that, it's going to go ahead and grab a variable, which is the start date of the chosen item, and then it's going to adjust that date. This is a tricky part. So you want to create a new event that's going to be based on the start time of the location of your event uh, to create travel time. Like if I'm gonna say I'm gonna be at Disneyland at 2 p.m., then I wanna go uh, back in time before that, the designated amount of time to create that new event. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm grabbing that event, creating a variable out of it, and then I'm subtracting time, and it's the number of minutes that I've said it would take in the earlier query. Then I'm adding a new event, and this is the easy part. So you just add a new event where you take the, um, the chosen city, which is the location of the event, like if it was Disneyland, it would be Anaheim, and then you take the location, you grab the location from the event you're working off of, and you use the same calendar. So everything is the same. So if I'm going to an event for the law practice, I get the legal calendar. If I'm going to an event for a personal item, I get the personal calendar. It just apes the same calendar. Uh, then it creates the adjusted time as the start time, which we just uh, created in the above step. And then the end date is the actual start time of the original event we're working off of. And it gives me an alert five minutes before. And then I do the exact same thing with um, another if statement, uh, except asking, uh, are we looking for travel time back? And it works in the opposite direction. This, the start time for that event will be the end of the event we're working off of. And the end time for that new travel back time will be that time plus the designated number of minutes. Um, the whole thing works pretty cleanly. It's great. I like using it. Um, so whenever I have to uh, plan my week, I make sure I get travel time in there. Usually what I do is on Sunday night, I'll just run this script uh, against the following week to see if I've got any events planned that don't have travel time already attached to them. So I'm going to go ahead and run this one right now. I'm going to hit the play button. And it's going to look at things. I've got a, a trip this week, so there's not many things that have travel time, but I've got this event here to go to Disneyland today at, at 2 p.m. So I go ahead and tap on that. What's the travel time to Anaheim? You can see it pulled the city out. I'm going to say, well, it's a holiday, so I'm going to say 30 minutes is good. Click OK. Um, travel there and travel back. So I keep both of those checked, but I could check either one off or on. Click Done, and now it's done. So if I go over to my calendar... And I look over here in the left column, you can see I've got travel time to Anaheim for a half hour. And then once we finish the trip, I've got travel time back uh, from uh, 9 to 9.30. It copied the calendar I was using, the personal calendar. And if I go to the event on the way to, you can see there is even the, uh, the warning five minutes before the event. <laughs>